Hi, this is Scott here. I just wanted to show how to set up and configure the TP-Link slash CASA plugin that I wrote for FPP. So what you would do is in FPP, you go to the plugin manager. I already have it installed, but normally if you don't have it installed, you would scroll down. These are alphabetized. You'd find T, TP-Link, and hit install. And that will install the plugin. Um, the thing about the plugin is it works with CASA plugs. I know TP-Link also has their TAPO line. Um, that uses different security than the CASA plugs. So this only works with the CASA plugs and some of them CASA plugs can be used with the TAPO app and when you do that it actually makes them not work with the CASA app anymore. So make sure you're, the plugs you have are CASA plugs and you register them with the CASA app on your phone to use. Uh, this plugin. Once once we install it, in FPP you'll see a couple new menu options. There's a configuration thing we'll show a little bit later. And then there's the about and discovery and the help tab. I'm going to kind of show like three ways that we can control lights and plugs with the plugin. The first thing, this discovery tab, once we click it, It'll take three seconds to load because it's sending out a discovery packet. This will attempt to find any CASA devices on your network. This would be the name that matches the name you give it in the CASA app. And then this is the IP address. This is what we need to configure and turn things on and off. So we need to look up these host names. Um, you can also normally look them up in your router. But I added this tab just to try to make it a little bit easier. This is also the device model, so this is like a single plug. And there's some other... You can also control uh, dual plugs or like the six port um, strips as well. This 233, this is the one I want. This is an EP40, this is an outdoor two port plug. You can see how there's socket one and two. There's two plugs on here. It's a little waterproof. I copied the IP. And the, kind of the first easiest way that we can control these is we can just send commands. And I found the easiest way to test commands is to go to this command preset. In the status, just add one temporarily. Once we restart FPPD after the install, you should see these TP-Link commands. And they all start with TP-Link, so they're all grouped together. Uh, the first ones we'll focus on are these set ones, these last four. So once we hit set switch here... Sorry, camera's in the way a little bit. This will allow us to put in the IP of our switch. On this device, if you put 0 or 1, it'll do the first plug, and then 2 does the second. On the 300 power strips that have 6 plugs, if you do 0, it actually does all the plugs, and then 1 through 6. So it can be a little different depending on which device and the firmware. But I'll just set plug 1. We do this, and now we can just run that command right now. We run it, turns on the light uncheck it, that means we're going to turn it quote unquote off, we can run it again. So this is just a way that we can test these commands, make sure we got the IP right, seems to be working. So from there we can go to our playlist and we can just make a quick playlist here and let's just add these items. We'll turn the switch on, then we'll add a pause, wait a second, and then we will turn the switch off. Make sure we save it. You can see true is the on one, false is the off. Now we can just go to our status page, hit test, 
And in our playlist, turn it on, turn it off. That's just the easy way to do commands. So that's kind of the most basic way. This can get cumbersome once you start having lots of switches and lots of plugs. There's another mode that I added, which if we go to configuration, we can just add the devices in here. So similarly, we can hit plug one. Um, there's a start channel, which we'll get to in a second. But once we hit save here and restart, now in our playlist, instead of putting the individual switches, we can delete those. There's some TP-Link commands here that say all switches on, all switches off. And we do the same with the lights as well. So now we can just do all switches on, put that at the beginning, and then do all switches off, put that at the end, save our playlist, and now instead of putting them all individually, I'll just use that configuration that we set up on the configuration page, and I'll turn them on, turn them off, the same thing it did before, but now instead of having to put them in individually, it'll use all of them in this list. So that's kind of the, if you had a bunch of switches, this more a better way that you could just add them in here and you don't have to then add them all the time and in your playlist you could then just put this in your lead in you know it turns on all of your switches which could be on inflatables you know powering up your controllers something like that and then you put the off in your lead out which then will turn everything off at the end of the night that's kind of the first simple ways we could also do it with lights too which I'll show here in a second. So the next part I need to, that plug has a smart bulb in it, so I just need to turn on, turn on the bulb. So that's a smart bulb right now, it's just on a white. But now that we've turned it on, we should be able to go to the discovery page and find this bulb that we just turned on. Um, I have found we have a lot of devices. It doesn't like to discover them all the time, which is probably the case I'm gonna run into. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't see this bulb coming up in the list. I know which I've run it a couple times. Oh, here it is, bedroom lamp. So this is the one I have on the table. This is the IP address. Copy that. It shows some of its color temperatures, so if we want to manually set, like if we wanted to mimic this number again, we could go into the command and put 27 and then put a, this is the hue set, loom or value, and 34 would be the brightness. So similarly with the light, we can do a command. We can set RGB, HSV, which is like the default, or we can, in the configuration, add them as well and use the group commands. But we can put this IP address in here. Let's put this as red. Run it, and it puts the light bulb as red. So again, we can put these in a playlist or however you want to do it. Or we can also just do, you know, set our RGB on all of the bulbs that we have them configured. 
the more advanced mode we have is it also supports start channels. So if I put the bulb in here, we can set the start channel to 1, which we'll have to match in X lights. And then we can upload a sequence, and I'll actually take the channel data from channels 1, 2, 3, and put them on the bulb. The problem with X lights is because this is not a native output, it's kind of hard to um, make a sequence that we can put on this FPP controller. What you can do is X lights has this old fallback start channel mode for controllers that don't have ports. You can make a custom FPP. So in X lights, if you go to C program files, Xlights controllers, these are all the controller definition files that show up in the drop downs. You can make a dummy one, I call it here. And in there, if you don't put any ports but still enable auto layout, Xlights will allow you to put models on it and it'll just put the channels on that controller and not actually put them on any, chan on any ports. Um, it's kind of a fallback mode for our older stuff. I can put this file in the description. But what that allows us to do is in Xlights we can add this FPP device. And it's just this dummy one. I'll put the IP address. Pretty sure that's what it is. Let me just open it up and double check. 5.84. So I typed, yep. Because it doesn't have any ports, we can't visualize it. It does allow us, if we go in the layout here and select, so I just made a single line with one light, uh, made the size a little bit bigger. But because it's auto start channel, with that setting set, we can select it in here. We can't set a port. But if you see, the auto start channel still assigns that model to that controller. It does do it like alphabetically, so if you put multiple ones in here, it would just put them alphabetically. So the first one would start at 1, and then go to 4. This allows us, now we can make a sequence. So I just created a new sequence, made a basic bars effect. It's just cycling these three colors every three seconds. We can render save. And now we can go to FBP Connect. Upload our bars here to that's the FPP instance. And now this allows us, we have to match the start channel to X lights, so it's kind of better to keep it earlier in your list so the start channel doesn't change. But now that we match this, we can go to our sequence, and when we hit play on this, the channel data from 1 through 3 in our sequence will now be outputted through the plugin onto our smart bulb. It is using like HTTP calls to send the data. There is a little bit of lag a little bit. You probably won't notice, but I don't I wouldn't be doing like shimmer effects and stuff. Just maybe basic colors to turn your bulbs on. If you have multiple bulbs, it does attempt to thread them and turn them all at the same time. But I have seen in my testing, if you have like three or four, they're not all in sync perfect. It might be just, you know, put it to a color for the sequence or, you know, do some slow things on it. But that's just kind of a way you can use X lights and the plugin to take data and put it on your porch lights or overhead lights or whatever bulbs you have outside. Yeah, that's kind of the basic couple ways we can configure it. If you go to the about, it has a link to the GitHub where the plugin is. Uh, you can make an issue. 
if you have any problems or just send me a message on Facebook or through my website and uh, I can try to help you with it. So um, I hope that's helpful. Uh, thanks everyone for watching.